As a macro photographer, I'm always looking for pieces of equipment that will enable me to zoom in just a little bit closer because I always love to see those details. Now in today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing a piece of equipment that's gonna do just that. I'm gonna be using the new Nisi close-up 49 millimeter plus nine diopter lens, which comes in this pretty cool case. Now I'm gonna be testing this piece of equipment in the field and in my room to try and get a sense of how it performs. Now to make the test a little more interesting in the field, a couple days ago, I visited the Cambridge Butterfly Conservatory. It is definitely one of my most favorite places to go for indoor macro photography. It practically has an indoor tropical rainforest with a working waterfall and hundreds of butterflies. And those beautiful little creatures are one of my most favorite things to shoot in macro photography. So that's where our review is going to take place first. So like I said, this place is like a tropical rainforest. And with that comes the humidity. Unfortunately, my camera and the Nisi lens just kept fogging up. But luckily, I found some anti-fog wipes in my bag. So that worked out perfectly and it really helped get rid of all the fog. Once that initial issue was figured out, it was time to walk around and try and find some butterflies to take pictures of, and hopefully ones that would stay still. And right off the bat, I was actually able to find a butterfly that was staying really still. I think it was because there's just so many people walking around, they kind of get used to people. The first shot that I was able to capture with the Nisi lens actually came out pretty good. However, I noticed that I kind of reduced the depth of field and I was having a hard time getting a lot in focus. But I quickly realized that this lens would probably do a little better if I could focus stack. And that's just not my style of macro photography because I'm shooting with my camera in one hand and my flash in the other. It's really tough for me to stabilize and focus stack. But as you can see here, when you compare with the Nisi and without the Nisi, the Nisi was able to zoom in just a little bit more and you can kind of compare using like the veins and the wing there. I just found it was harder to get more in focus, especially doing a freehand. I also found I had to get very close to my subject, which I was pretty lucky. A lot of butterflies didn't mind and they stayed right close. When I was able to get a photo in focus, the details that the Nisi lens produced were amazing. The sharpness was great and it didn't look like it was reducing the quality at all from when I didn't have the lens on. Now it was really tough to try and get two photos, one with the Nisi and one without the Nisi, where they were kind of similar in lighting and angle of the same butterfly. Because even though the butterflies seemed to be okay with humans around them, they never really stayed in the same place for too long because it took too much time to have the Nisi lens on and then take it off and then take the same photo. But luckily I did manage to find a butterfly that stayed still for a very long time. So these were the best two photos that I could have to easily compare the lens when it was on and when it was off. You can obviously see that the Nisi lens zoomed in a little more than when I didn't have the lens on. However, I still prefer the photo without the lens because I was able to get more in focus and the lighting was a little better. And I think the lighting was a little better because I had to get so close to the butterfly that I was almost in the way of my flash. So it was making me crowd my subject a lot more. But if I could have focus stacked, I could have got some awesome details that I probably couldn't have gotten without it. After spending almost an hour and a half at the Butterfly Conservatory, I kind of knew what I was going to get quality wise from the lens. So I figured it was time to head on home and try it out in a more controlled environment. But before we do that, here are a few more pictures that I was able to capture with and without the Nisi lens. I hope you enjoy. So now that we're back from the Butterfly Conservatory, we're gonna do a few more tests in a more controlled environment. I'm gonna be using my tripod. I'm also gonna be using a slider in order to do some photo stacks that I wasn't able to do at the Butterfly Conservatory. That way we can get precise photos and compare with and without the Nisi diopter. So I forgot to mention that in order to put the Nisi lens onto your lens, you're gonna need an adapter ring. And luckily for me, it came with a 62 millimeter, which is perfect for my lens, but it also comes with a 67 millimeter. Now this right here is what I usually do for focus stacking. As you can see, I have my camera on a tripod on top of a slider. That way I can move my camera forwards or backwards centimeters at a time and take multiple photos. I have my flash just behind my camera and you can see here that I cut my little subject. I found a dead fly on my windowsill, which is gonna be perfect for this example. Before I show you guys the stacked images with the Nisi and without the Nisi, I just wanna show you the distance that the subject needs to be in front of the Nisi lens and when I don't have it on, just to show you how close I need to get. So as you can see here, I am really close to my subject, but when I take it off, I've pretty much like doubled my working distance which doesn't really matter in this circumstance because it's a dead bug. So that's why I think this lens works a lot more when I'm in a more controlled environment. But when I'm out in the field, it makes it a little more difficult. So here are the results that you've been waiting for. I think each image took around 15 to 20 stacked images. And I believe the quality pretty much looks the same. 
you can clearly see that the Nisi has zoomed in a lot more, or at least a noticeable amount. What I didn't notice at first, actually, is that when I zoom in really close and crop in, the Nisi actually has better quality and it looks like it's sharper. I'm a little surprised by this because I thought if I added more glass I might lose some sharpness or at least be the same as it would without the lens. Overall I'd say this lens is pretty great. I'm pretty impressed with the build quality. I enjoy it a lot more than my Raynox 250 DCR. It comes in a really nice traveling case and it was able to add a little more magnification even though it made the depth of field a little more narrow. But if you're a macro photographer that does a lot of photo stacking I don't think you'd had any issue using this. Me personally with my setup I like to take single shots out in the field so that makes things a little more complicated using this but I also do a lot of stuff in my room in a more controlled environment and I think that's where this is going to come in handy. I'm definitely going to be using it in future projects. Thank you for watching and if you found this video to be helpful or you just enjoy the content please consider subscribing hitting that bell notification so you won't miss any videos from this channel. Thank you so much and until next time have a good one guys.